My new project and latest project is Dollar Bill Yule, the first decade of hip hop. And look at what Spring Records did from when they released the first hip hop record in 1979 with the Fatback Band's um, King Tim 3 through to when they closed their doors a decade later. And that labels strange and inconsistent relationship with the hip hop. Just for you, we're strong as an ox and tall as a tree. We can rock you so viciously. We throw the hands in your eyes, the bass in your face. It made people who were in the music industry in New York start to think, how could I, how could I make this happen? And there was a number of people who were trying to work out a way. Um, one of those was Bill Curtis, who was the leader of the Fatback Band, who were massively successful throughout the 70s, both in the UK and in their home country. Almost uniquely with a different set of records in the UK that were popular than were the ones that were popular in the US. Bill Curtis was a fascinating person who had, who had been demobbed in 1950, had come north, um, played in touring bands, including with the likes of Jimmy Reed, played in the Apollo House Band in Harlem. Um, in the early 70s had had his uh, storefront booking agency where he's called Fatback's House of Hits where he would have, a, he had a record label, he booked the band out to do weddings and bar mitzvahs and anything else to make money. He understood the street, um, he'd had some great records but he also was connected with a, a New York industry of people like Paul Winley, who'd recorded doo-wop records and was recording funk records as the 70s started. Sylvia and uh, Bobby Robinson, who were out in New Jersey with their all-platinum label. Um, people who kind of had always worked, and Bobby Robinson up in Harlem with his uh, um, Bobby's House of Hits uh, record store that had was the one, the record store that was next to on the same same block as uh, the Apollo, where you know all of these people knew what was going on on the street, how black music was developing, and all of them were looking for ways of taking the music forward uh, and exploiting whatever trends were coming through. For instance, Jimmy Spicer's Money Dollar Bill Yule is one of the cl early classics of hip hop, but it was recorded after a three year gap. It brings in many of the most interesting people of early hip hop um, music industry. Uh, Spicer himself was managed by Russell Simmons, Rush Management. He was one of their first clients along with Curtis Blow. Simmons of course went on to uh, start up Def Jam and be, be one of the most important entrepreneurs in the whole history of hip hop. Dollar Bill itself is a brilliant electronic uh, based um, hip hop number that has been sampled many times including by Montel Jordan on This Is How We Do It and of course the Wu-Tang Clan on uh, Cream. Um, other records on here include DJ Hollywood who um, was one of the early pioneers of hip hop talking, he was kind of more uptown, he did it in the clubs, he wasn't really a street rapper but he made very interesting record. Magic's message was made by um, the New York radio DJ, Mr. Magic, who had a uh, who had the groundbreaking show on WBLS um, Kiss in New York City, which uh, was the main the main show for hip hop. In fact, it, when it started, it was the only show um, where he worked alongside Marley Marl, who of course became a world famous rapper in his own right later on. Spring records have been going since the uh, late 60s and had been had an association with Polydor Records throughout the 1970s which had meant that every album released was heavily funded. Um, this meant this created a great atmosphere for their main acts the Fatback Band, Millie Jackson and Joe Simon. They were given money to make a record once maybe twice a year and they were then promoted through Polydor's systems which created some massive hits for all three acts. But Bill Curtis particularly was keen to always keep on top of what was going on and alongside his partner in crime Jerry Thomas they were keen to keep the band moving forward. 
You'd see this in the 1980s when they made a whole album of electronic music um, with the This Is The Future album. But in 1978-79, they noticed hip hop was really working in the New York clubs. And they thought, what could we do to make a record? So they had a tr they had an instrumental called Catch That Beat, and someone suggested um, they, that they knew a rapper who could come in and record. A friend suggested a, a, a rapper called Tim Washington to come up to the studio. He insisted on being called King Tim Three, rapping over the Catch a Beat track. He created what was to be the first recorded evidence of rap music, despite some claims by several other people that they were first. Bill tried to convince the powers that be at Spring that this should be their next single. They were frightened that something so raw would upset their supporters at R&B radio. So they sneaked the track out on the B-side of Fat Fat Band's next single. Within a month, Bill's old friend uh, Jer uh, Joe Robinson at Sugar Hill, Sugar Hill Platinum had put out the Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight, had a massive worldwide hit, and Bill would forever rue the fact th that Spring had been too timid. It, but in f what, what this in fact showed was a, an uncomfortable relationship that Spring Records would have with rap music over the following 10 years. <laughs>